classrooms second classroom series on mediation education e mediation writing is a unique venture where trained mediators and practicing advocates from across our country have joined together with the noble objective to impart their knowledge in the subject of mediation under the emw banner this illustrious group of professionals have launched india's first magazine dedicated to mediation on its digital platform last year since then there have been 12 editions till date over the past year the freely accessible magazine has grown into a resource for articles and essays relating to the nuances of mediation it has wide circulation and contributions from advocates and mediators both in india and abroad emw is ably advised by its advisory board comprising senior advocates and trained experts in the field of mediation none of this would have been possible without the team spirit of the emw state coordinators from all states and uts of our country i may also take this opportunity to recognize the role of ms pushp gupta and mr thankachan in this unique initiative the importance of mediation has rightfully grown over the last few years in august 2020 the bar council of india made mediation a mandatory course component and compulsory subject in both 3 year and 5 year llb courses the bar council emphasized that part that apart from reading theory it was imperative that colleges and universities provide training in practical skills of mediation to law students while the bar council deliberated on the qualification to be prescribed for faculty teaching mediation emw took up the mantle by using its wide network across india to introduce gen next classroom series an online mediation teaching program for law students based on the proposed curriculum suggested by the bar council the classroom series involves inviting experts from the field to educate and train students in the skills required of a mediator i am happy to announce that the first of such series held between january and april earlier this year was a roaring success with students from 21 states participating and earning their certificates today we inaugurate the second classroom series and it is encouraging to note that the registration for the program has grown to over 190 students from 29 states including three international registrations we are privileged to have with us for this inauguration ceremony the august presence of honorable mr justice sunil thomas of the high court of kerala and honorable mr justice vibhu bakru of the high court of delhi both honorable judges have kindly agreed to spare their valuable time and share their views on the subject at hand as advocates would say there could not be a better division bench justice thomas enrolled as an advocate in 1983 and while practicing law was also lecturing at the government law college at ernakulam justice thomas joined the judicial services in 2001 and has served as additional district and sessions judge thrissur and thereafter palakkar before his appointment as registrar in the honorable supreme court justice thomas was elevated to the bench in 2015 He is presently a member of the governing board of Kerala State Mediation and Conciliation Centre at the High Court of Kerala. We welcome you, sir, and now invite you to please share a few words. Justice Prabhu Bakru, distinguished guests, my dear students, I should start with an apology because there was some technical hitch. I could not uh, open the audio in the meanwhile. so that's what happened in the meanwhile i am extremely sorry to all of you and that's what happens when we have a program like this on this type of platform i am extremely happy to be with you on this occasion when emw is launching a new program not the program is a second program which they are conducting for imparting mediation training to the students who are in the law colleges throughout the country i am told that about 200 students are attending this training program as you all know emw has been doing a wonderful work for the last one year through their e platform 
because during the pandemic period when all the sessions were stopped all the interactions got stalled this was probably the only media through which the mediators could interact think aloud share their views and spread and continue the process of mediation i will also say one thing that one advantage one benefit of this training program is that till now we have been concentrating the programs on training essentially on lawyers mediators and also the stakeholders stakeholders probably now after the syllabus uh, the idea has become a part of the syllabus in law colleges the need for training giving them the uh, training to the students have also increased so naturally it is a duty of uh, these type of groups teams like uh, team emw also to take up such programs to impart education to the next generation ultimately what happens is that now what we want is that apart from considering the mediation program as one method of settling disputes which will reduce the number of dependency in case dependency of case in india it should be seen as a culture where the concept of the mitigation should completely should undergo a complete transition the attitude of the litigants the attitude of the public and everybody should change to that of a settlement culture that's what we want to do. we want to do and what is that is the ultimate aim of mediation because definitely settlement of dispute will work out of court will definitely work as a system for reducing the number of pendency of cases in in the courts because we don't have any other alternate mechanism for reducing 3.78 crores of cases pending in india and we also know that the judge uh, citizens or uh, population ratio is the lowest in india in around 20 judges for 10 million people almost several uh, vacancies are there in almost all jurisdictions vacancies are there and courts are working hard to reduce the number of cases and ultimately we have reached a stage where we have no other option except to think of other alternate mechanisms this is why we have to get ready for a major transition in the media in the field of alternate dispute resolution though section 89 of the cpc provides for five methods of uh, dispute resolution mechanism after the amendment in 1999 and all the five methods of dispute resolution mechanism have grown and developed in india mediation always stands unique because that's the only method through which you can settle complex issues that is the only method through which a pair an active trained mediator can play an important major role of bringing the disputants to a settlement culture settlement uh, mood and resolve the disputes so though each of the mechanisms provided under section 89 have their own uniqueness and significance mediation as uh, stands apart as a very important technique and it is necessary that the students who uh, the students of our uh, institutions law colleges are trained to understand the nuances of mediation culture we all know that it is mediation was not a, it was not, it's not a, nothing new that has been introduced brought from abroad it was here in india we have been following that practice before the english people came and substituted the traditional mechanism of dispute resolution that we had in india and ultimately what happened was that there was a sea change in the attitude of the public where we where all of us became more litigant friendly litigation friendly i should say and this has resulted 
in, we have reached the situation where we are forced to treat it uh, area of mechanism and to promote it. So naturally, what will happen is that if you catch the new generation, if they are empowered with the significance of the mediation, definitely the, the, there will be an attitudinal change and each of the student can become the messenger of mediation. And there are many ways in which students can participate in the mediation program. If, he, if a student changes his attitude towards the litigation process, and if he is able to persuade another person, another prospective litigant to go for a mediation, definitely he is doing service to the mediation techniques, mediation mechanism. Students can participate in the legal aid clinics, contribute themselves to, uh, to the mediation uh, programs, impart legal education to the public, thereby contribute themselves. And ultimately, when the next generation of lawyers come, definitely we can expect a sea change in the attitude of the sea change towards the mediation culture. And there are a lot of avenues where they can contribute also. So I'm sure that the mediation training program that we are you are going to impart for the next 14 sessions will definitely help the students. And I'm also sure that we have got the best resource persons who are capable of handling the classes. Dear students, take advantage of all the sessions that you have. And ultimately, let you also become a part of the mediation culture and bring change to the society and bring peace to the society. Thank you very much. I wish the program every success. Thank you very much. It is my special privilege to invite our other speaker this evening. Justice Bhaktu is an alumnus of Delhi Public School, Matra Road, a prestigious institution that has the distinction of producing several sitting and past judges of the Delhi High Court. In addition to obtaining his bachelor's degree in commerce and subsequently in law, Justice Bhaktu is also a qualified chartered accountant. His competence in commercial laws and vast experience were recognized by the court in his designation as senior advocate in 2011 and subsequent elevation to the bench in 2013. We welcome you, sir, and invite you to please share with us a few words. Thank you, Mr. Amdo, and uh, good evening to, to all, all the participants uh, and uh, particularly my esteemed brother from Kerala and uh, all of you esteemed learned, uh, learned persons who have actually come together to, make, to take this initiative forward. At the outset, I must compliment the uh, EMW. BMW for first taking out a magazine because that, uh, publishing a magazine of this sort is probably the first of such initiatives in India. And uh, more importantly, this particular initiative of holding a, a classroom series to train uh, students in this subject is, uh, is, is, is something that really makes me happy and I, I feel really encouraged uh, by the wide acceptance and, and that mediation is now being accorded. And more so, uh, it's, not a, it's not an acceptance which is just lip service. It is also uh, backed with a certain amount of skill set. The fact that uh, an initiative in this regard is, has been taken is, it makes, me, makes me really happy. Now, as, as far as the subject of mediation is concerned, someone at the outset really mentioned that it, is, it has now become very widely accepted. It is, uh, and, and the reasons, it's, it's not far to see what the reasons for acceptance of mediation uh, as a dispute resolution mechanism are. In certain fields, as we know, it's, it's, uh, there is really no alternative for this, uh, except to take a recourse to mediation. And this particularly is uh, more important in matters such as family matters. Uh, for example, in California, in the state of California and US where you have, a no-fault divorce, it is now imperative that uh, the 
parents come together to at least make a parenting plan. Although strictly speaking, that may not be mediation as we understand it, but the process is essentially the same. It is by a skilled counselor who doesn't really take any sides, who's a neutral person and helps the parents to come and uh, come together and make a parenting plan. Now this, uh, there is no, there is no alternative. I would have to start to imagine that any court would be able to do what a, a good counselor does in that case. We also see reflections of it in other other jurisdictions. For example, uh, in in United Kingdom, where the Family and the Child Act was enacted. This has become really a, a part of uh, the entire dispute resolution mechanism as far as family law is concerned. Now, as far as commercial law is concerned, it is it's, it is mediation has been on the anvil for a very long time. Uh, courts have been encouraging it. Sometimes lawyers also are encouraging it. And now you you, you know, there is a step to formalize it in one way or the other. In the Commercial Courts Act, as you know, with the introduction of the new amendment, now mediation is now mandatory before you can file a suit on the commercial side. And the idea really is to enable the parties to first take an informed decision. In commercial matters, one, one, can, one, one is expected to be a little more dispassionate and really focus on what the commercial realities of the transaction are. And it is therefore expected that if the parties are duly informed of their rights, their obligations, they would, they would uh, in most circumstances, avoid going to a prolix litigate, prolix and an, and, and an expensive litigation, and then try and take and uh, make the best of what they, what's been, what's on the table and then resolve their disputes. And I think that's really the thought when it comes to uh, mediation in, Commercial matter. In Europe, I would say that you know, although we say that laws change and laws, uh, you know, there are uh, there are paradigm shifts in law, but the fact is uh, and that there is no abrupt changes in any law. Law usually evolves, and it is preceded by formation of a very strong opinion. And I think that's. Uh, what seems to be happening here that uh, with with e EMW and with other agencies now really taking up mediation in a big way and actually educating persons that uh, there is a skill set involved in mediation. This opinion is being formed. And I think this uh, the manifestations that you see in enactment of various laws, making it mandatory are, are really a uh, a, a, a logical sequitur that will happen. Therefore, in one sense, it is a metamorphosis which is which is taking place since some time, and it has come this far. And uh, I must say, as uh, I read the magazine that was uh, that was circulated, and I was uh, I was truly happy to read that there are there is a discussion on certain amount of skill sets. Uh, there is a certain amount of confidentiality where mediators can't share anything, but. Uh, any names or any particulars, but uh, it would be interesting to have case law studies on mediation as well, uh, which organizations like certain mediation centers and certain professionals would have the database to eventually evolve that. Forward. And I think that's that's the that's where that's where the environment today is. That's the broad spectrum in which we currently stand, and it's. The, uh, the move on, from, from everybody is to ensure that mediation is given due importance as a dispute resolution mechanism. Uh, and if, if you look at it, in, if you step back and look at mediation in the context of commercial disputes, you find that, uh, uh, that litigation and mediation as dispute resolution mechanisms are not really that far apart. Of course, there is no decision making for a med that a mediator needs to do as far as mediation is concerned and litigation is of course purely a, an adversarial fight that takes place in court. But the link is quite, uh, is a, there is an inevitable and a strong link between uh, uh, how one gets the importance uh, where one stands and how the importance as far as litigation uh, the importance of litigation to resolve a dispute 
is concerned. So it's it's really not in, in that sense disconnected. It's not only dis not disconnected in uh, in the sense uh, that it would be probably the same matters that ultimately may be resolved by mediation, and some similar matters may be resolved, may be adjudicated upon in courts. I think the link is also on on the basic thought. What propels parties to go to mediations and what will propel parties to go to litigation in courts are also not disjunct. And the thought, uh, the, 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 the factors that weigh with the parties to do so are not very different. And in earlier times, one would, one would uh, if, if one looks at any commercial litigation very carefully, you'd find that there is always a perceived advantage to one party. One party always perceives inevitably that there is an advantage to go to litigation. And uh, I think largely there are two factors. One would be the delay. Everybody realizes the delay in litigation. And therefore, if a party is to believe that the delay is going to work to its advantage, then he would shun any method of dispute resolution and then go for litigation in courts. Second, there may be advantages of uh, expenses, for instance. If you find there are two parties who are litigating and uh, one is not that well off or doesn't have the propensity to fund a litigation to some extent, you'll find that the other party would then strategize to ensure that he then brings some certain amount of economic pressure by going to lit by by instituting a litigation, and therefore that will be that's another uh, area which uh, you know which propels parties to get get to litigation. Now, if these very factors are addressed, then you find that. That the move towards mediation or an alternate dispute resolution mechanism uh, obviously uh, would be a more acceptable method of resolving disputes because these advantages either un would cease to exist or at least would not be perceived as such. Because experience does tell us that in long prolix litigation, there are really no winners in the end. I mean, you can take, for example, a family litigation that spans two generations or three generations. The, uh, as, as we've seen in our country, there are no winners irrespective of what the decision ultimately may, may be rendered, whether in favor of one party or the other. Three generations or two generations later, the corpus of the litigation, or the, if it's a business litigation, has practically ceased to exist. During this period, you'll find that one of the feuding parties has already started a parallel business, and perhaps the more competent or a more crafty side of, the, of, 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 a, of, a, of a business a, fa a family business um, has already uh, far exceeded the, uh, the position that the other other faction of the family may be. So, really, if you look at it, and everybody, most lawyers do tell this to litigants that really, if you go to a prolix litigation, there may be no winners. But nonetheless, because there is a perceived advantage that some uh, parties do feel, they do favor litigation. And of course, the second thing is the psychological aspect because litigation is always seen as a war. So if you want to fight with someone, <coughs> there is a huge ego advantage to come to litigation. We have seen in our courts, uh, persons who have practically given up their businesses in commercial litigation and they are seen in corridors of the court for, general, for years to end. Of course, there is very little answer there, ready answers to that kind of uh, problem. But I'm, I'm sure that uh, with a reasonable skill set, a mediator may be able to uh, persuade the parties not to take that course. And I think the intrinsic advantage for a mediator is that he doesn't decide, he or she doesn't decide the, the list. He is only assist the parties into, so therefore, uh, parties to arrive at their uh, at an amicable resolution. So to that extent, uh, mediation may not be seen as a war by two feuding parties. To the extent that a uh, uh, that a litigation is seen, uh, a litigation in court is viewed. So I think these 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 really are the factors that weigh. And now, if you, if you in this concept, if you look at in in this perspective, if you look at what is happening in, on the ground, uh, for one, uh, there is a serious move to make to ensure that costs are real. So in commercial courts, when you award costs at the end, the uh, party that does that does not prevail. Uh, has to, has to pay substantial cost to the party that does. And if these costs become real, then that advantage that one 
may have uh, perceived of uh, having a, 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 a better uh, fighting power than the other party automatically diminishes. Now, uh, if you look at arbitrations, for instance, in, we haven't had third party funding in arbitrations, uh, but you find that increasingly that is being accepted. So really, if a person who is a good case, who is a legitimate claim, uh, but he does not have the funding to do so, can would have access to some funds to litigate. Therefore, this added advantage of one party having an unequal economic power may also to some extent reduce in times to come. So that's, that's happening on the other end. Of course, there is also a move to ensure that commercial litigations are decided in a time-bound manner by courts. So perhaps delays would then be addressed. But really, uh, let's not really kid ourselves. We are, we are a long way from achieving uh, uh, that sort of utopia where your litigation can be decided in a very, in, in, in six months or eight months, and everybody who is paid the cost gets reimbursed. So to, and I think, in, with, but it is, it, is a, it is a thought process that is developing as far as the litigation side is concerned, and I'm sure that this is aiding mediation in a in a big way because uh, now, now, now parties should realize that uh, mediation is one of the ways which they can uh, which they can take it forward. And I, I think, uh, on the other hand, the fact that you may have an, a, a very strong and a and a robust mechanism by mediate in the form of mediation centers to assist parties to resolve the disputes may also have a converse effect on the thought process in rewarding costs and in, uh, in ensuring that uh, certain matters, at least certain commercial matters are decided expeditiously because then there is now no, no reason to be, uh, you know, to, 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 so to, so, to so to say hold back the punches as far as courts are concerned when it comes to uh, awarding costs even punitive costs at some in, in in some cases. So I think that's that's really the, the position that is uh, the the interplay that exists between litigation and mediation in the present. And uh, of course, uh, finally, I think uh, there is no alternative to mediation as a dispute resolution mechanism because judiciary does not have the bandwidth uh, to take care of that, uh, the volume of litigation that comes through its portals. So it's really, as we say, the Tina factor here, there is no other alternative. And that I think is uh, uh, is being recognized wide, widely. In fact, I was just uh, before joining and I was, I, I uh, Google mediation, which is mandatory in other countries. And I found the number of papers that are there in UK one of the papers was very interesting. It said that mandatory mediation was thought of and abandoned at some point of time. And after a decade and a half or two decades, it's back on the table with uh, all stakeholders. So I, this is, of course, one of the articles written, which is there in, in uh, uh, you can see in Google, but uh, it, it does indicate that uh, there is a serious thought about making mediation mandatory in different uh, jurisdictions and different subjects. And uh, I think given, if, if one couples this, folk, uh, this emphasis on mediation with very strong and robust skill building, then it will work. And there's no reason why it would not work. Um, but if one perceives that one is going to mediation because one will not get any relief from courts, then of course it's a different, everyone would then go to mediation with a sense of gloom that we can't get our matters resolved in court, so therefore let's just go and get it done in mediation. And then if that happens, then it certainly will not be an effective tool. So I think the, the mediation as a tool would work only with when it's coupled with a very robust uh, skill development, which I'm happy to see that efforts are being made towards that end. Uh, and I think with that note, I would wish EMW the, the very best for conducting these classes.
and I will wish all the participants who have joined that they 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 have a they have a great learning experience in the day in the next days to come in this classroom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. Your call for case laws on mediation is something that EMW can certainly explore and with its network across jurisdictions, collate and collaborate at, and look at real data to improve the efficiency of the process. Moreover, the factors mentioned by you, sir, which propel a party to litigation certainly need to be addressed or at least balanced for parties to opt for mediation despite the perceived advantage. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good, a very good evening to all of you. I, Mehak Rati, would like to convey my best wishes to our esteemed guests for the event. Honorable Mr. Justice Sunil Thomas, sir, and Honorable Mr. Justice Vibhu Bakru, sir. Our, our state coordinators, faculty members, team members, and all the students of EMW second uh, classroom series on mediation education. It has been a wonderful start to our second classroom series, and I would like to take this opportunity to present the vote of thanks to all the people who made it possible. First and foremost, on behalf of entire EMW team, I would like to thank our esteemed, uh, esteemed guests, Honorable Mr. Justice uh, Sunil Thomas, for joining us today and for your words of wisdom, sir. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Honorable Mr. Justice Vibhu Bakru, sir, for gracing the occasion with your presence and for enlightening us. We look forward to your support and blessings to e-mediation writings in future also. I would now like to thank all the mentors, the faculty members for this classroom series for, uh, for agreeing to take out their valuable time. And I would like to thank the state coordinators and the advisory board members for their continued efforts and for their support to us. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the students for joining us from different states. I'm sure that this will be going to be a great learning experience for all of uh, you. And uh, as our honorable judges have already mentioned that uh, how crucial is mediation, I'm sure uh, you uh, can learn something out of it and take this ahead in your future also. Now uh, to end, I would like to end the session with a quote from Martin Luther King. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. So this is just a small beginning from our end towards mediation education with high hopes to bring in a positive change and to make the society more peaceful place to live in. Once again, thank you everyone for your presence today and have a great evening ahead. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Then we have Mr. Chanduk, sir, also with us. Uh, sir, can we have you? Chanduk, sir? Sir is here with us. Oh. Meeting is ended. I think no, see, Chandik sir, it's not seen now. Okay. Sir is here. Sir is here with us. You have to unmute him. Yes, let me, let me. Shall I unmute all? Uh, please. Yes. Yes. Still, everybody is muted. No, no, I unmuted all now. But the participant is here. Yes. yes, yes. They are yes. to unmute themselves. Yes. No, I think now it's, sir, uh, Mr. Chandyok, sir. Anji, sir, yes. <laughs> sir, a few after, words from you. After having heard uh, my Lord Justice Thomas and my Lord Justice Mimu Bakru, I don't think anything is left. It's a effort that I think uh, our young participant or organizer has given us that you have taken a step forward. The staircase is already crossed. So I'm sure with the second event that you started on classes all over the country, the children would, the students would learn and as I think this, Thomas said that, and I repeat that, culture of settlement comes in and there is a resolution comes in. In fact, I don't call anywhere today uh, with all humility at my command that we are looking at mediation as an alternative to, because there's a lot of 
pending briefs with us in the courts. We are looking at a way of life, how we will resolve these conflicts within us, as well as within people that we meet or within with people that we have our business or any other dealing. So if that becomes a way of life, then probably push pen everybody and the hector will be out of job. We'll have been left with nothing to work on to see how mediation works. I see on board, I see on the screen, extremely rich, enriching experience people. Javad is there, I see Dr. Padma there, I see many other people there. And I'm sure with your effort that you all are doing collectively, we are looking for a day which is not too far when you will actually compel parties who have conflicts to come to you, take your guidance, take your help, empower themselves, and settle their ongoing disputes. It's a great effort. Congratulations, Push, and congratulations, Thakul. Everybody else, all your faculty, best of luck to the students. I'm sure you are going for very good times to come. The 14 lessons. I would request uh, if I could be allowed to join those sessions, I would love to do it. Because I, I would like to be a student because it's, it's something to learn every day. And I wanted to tell the students that despite being a part of the education process, from 2006, in my process of looking at things, I see every day a new aspect of mediation coming up. And I think that is what the evolution of this this position is. And I'm sure times are not very far when you will be able to standardize them. We hope the government is looking at it and would soon come out with the legislation which will further empower this process further. Best of luck to all of you. Best of luck to the faculty. And thank you everybody. And thanks, Push, that I was only supposed to be a spectator. I wanted to participate to learn something. But like Lister that you are, you're always favorable to your elder brother. And you always say that you come in now, punch it at the end. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be among the young you, people sir. and feel young about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank you, sir. It was really uh, nice that we are here and we have our seniors, uh, Javad sir, Uma ma'am, Kavita ji, Sheila ma'am. All of us are here to guide us and it's the luck, I would say, of these students and uh, even us because it's a learning process. We'll be also learning with them from our resource person. So students, please make best use of this classroom series and we look forward for suggestions also. Uh, thank you so much for registering. We, uh, we are there with you forever. Please be peace builders in times to come. Please be peace builders. And you'll definitely see a change in your own life. Your parents would say that these are our own kids. They are behaving much better in a much better way with the way they used to behave earlier. So we are looking for a sea change in your own nature. Uh, you'll become from human being to being human. This is what the uh, message of mediation education is. So thank you, students. Looking forward to see you tomorrow for the first classroom. And Mr. Chandyuk said, I'll definitely share the classroom link with you so that you can be one of the senior or junior most students in the class. Certainly. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Mahek, for this wonderful. You're making us uh, nervous. Now. Thank you, girls. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Mahek. Thank You're you. making the faculty nervous. Thank now. you, ma'am. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> By, by inviting Chandyok, sir, you're making us nervous, I said. <laughs> Maybe she's putting a check on us. <laughs> no, on a lighter way and with the end of it, let me share something what Jawad has just said. We had a great professor in Delhi University called this is Mr. Professor Matadeen. And he used to teach us IPR. And I was the president of law faculty then, and I was sitting with the dean of the faculty of law and discussing something to his respective. And he said that, look, uh, Mr. Chandyog, you don't come to my class. I said, uh, I came last time also. I'll come to again day after. The class is day after. And in law faculty, Delhi, we have those, you know, it's not a teaching process. It's with a case law. So you get a 
cyclo style pages to discuss that judgment. So I got that cyclo style, got prepared, sat on the first seat. And then questioned him and I said, the judgment is incorrect on the following grounds. So I took the act with me. So I did 